here I'm going to work through one example or one really advanced example of DAX just to show you what you can achieve if you learn and understand DAX really well. Now there's so many of these analytical scenarios that you find in the real world that can be answered by executing DAX formula really well. Now here's one example. We may want to see well, what is the contribution to the profits of our organization based on the customer's ranking. So if you think about this logically, in any particular time frame, you've got a number of customers uh, that you might sell to, and you might want to rank those customers based on how um, you know how much they could contribute to your profits. Because in a lot of cases, you'll find the 80-20 rule, where 80% of your profits are actually made up by 20% of your customers. For example, it's not uh, you know, it's not actually <laughs> how this example works out, but that is that is a, a pretty common case in business. But um, but what we do want to see is we want to see well. Uh, for example, we might want to break out our customers uh, into uh, particular ranking uh, groups. So we might want to say top five customers or top 20 customers or top 50 customers. And we want to see, well, how much of our profit is attributed to just those customers uh, every time period or every quarter, for example. And so we're going to work through that exact example here. And this is what this actually shows. Now, to achieve this, you need to do some quite advanced work in DAX because if you think about it, these customer groups, these custom groups here, they don't exist in your model. So if we jump to our data model here, you'll see that they don't actually exist inside this model, the standard model. Where, where in here do we have uh, grouping information around a customer's ranking? It just doesn't exist. So we need to create it in a custom way. And so what we need to do is we need to create what's called a supporting table or a parameter table. And um, this, well, this is actually a supporting table in this case. Parameter table is slightly different. But uh, we need to create a table which allows us to run logic through it to then classify where a customer is grouped. So I'm going to run through how you actually do this from start to finish, and then you'll understand or you'll learn a lot of concepts around how DAX actually works, and then also you know, really what you can achieve um, when you understand DAX incredibly well. Okay, so first of all, we need to create this customer groups table. So I'm just going to show it to you, and then I'm just going to show you how you can actually change this because I've just realized it's not exactly correct. So we've I've created this very small table where I've gone, I've tried to um, class the customers in a particular group. So I've got top five, rank five to 20, and the rest. But I've just realized that I, I have recently changed this and it's actually 50, uh, the, and because this is a lot, there's a lot of customers in this data set. So it's actually zero to 50, 50 to 200, and 200 to a larger number. So that, it, that will hold all of the customers. But what I, I've realized, I just need to change this. So I'm gonna show you how you can actually do that. So I created this um, via going into data. To change it, I just go to the query editor and I go find the table, and over on the right hand side, you can, next to source, you can click on this, and you can make adjustments to it. So in this case, I'm gonna turn this into top 50, and then I'm gonna go 50 to 200, and then I'm gonna call the rest the rest, so that's fine. And then I go okay, and you'll see that that actually changed the table. I go close and apply, and then that will actually change the underlying table that we feed into our model. Okay, so now I'm going to um, get rid of this one. I'm going to build. I'm going to build this formula. I'm going to show you what this formula is. So first of all, obviously we've got total um, profits here, which is great. So we've got our total profits measure. But I want to see um, based on a ranking or based on this grouping that we've created, how much actually sit in each of these different. Um, these different groups. So how much of our profits is in the customers who are in the top 50? How many of our profits are from customers ranked 50 to 200? And who? how much of our profits are from the rest? Okay, so I'm not going to write out the formula because it will take um, quite a long time because it's quite, quite a lengthy one. Um, but I'm going to recreate it here. So I'm going to call this um, customer group profits, I'm going to call it. And then I'm just going to go equals and I'm going to jump down to another line here and I'm going to paste in this this formula here and we're going to talk through it. So if I just go OK and I drag this into my table here, you'll see now that we get different results in each of these different groups, right? So let's walk through what this actually, what this formula actually is actually doing because <clears throat> there's a bit to it. 
what we are doing here is we are calculating total profits, but we need to divide it up into these groups. And so we first of all obviously need to figure out, well, in the current context, what is the ranking? What is the ranking of each individual customer? We need to iterate through every single customer, which is what this does, which is what values does. And then for every single customer, we need to go and assess if their ranking is above the min of uh, a particular row in the customer group table or is below the max of the um, of a row in the customer groups table so if I just jump back to the customer groups table for a second you'll see that we have a min and we have a max so we need to evaluate not only the ranking of each individual customer but we need to evaluate if they actually sit within each of these individual groups now this formula does that all for us it goes and creates a uh, uh, a list here and that's what values does it creates a list of every single customer and then we iterate through every single customer and here we evaluate is this customer sitting within each of any of those groups and then if it is then this count rows says okay well then that row remains so if it's in the top five or top 50 or well, that row will, will remain and then it then calculates total profits for all of the customers which uh, which remain after this evaluate, evaluation has taken place. And so that's how we customize or how we break out all of these customers into these different groups. So now that we've got this, what we can do, um, which is really cool, is we can then integrate this back into our model. And so what I've got here is I've got my date table. I'm going to grab my quarter and year here. And you'll see that this now breaks out all of the customer uh, profits not only for the group, but also for the quarter. And so I'm going to change this into a visualization uh, like so, where we can actually see the underlying profits for each different quarter, and then the colors represent the group ranking. Now to finish this off, to finish this off, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to turn this into a 100% stacked column chart. And then if I go and retrieve the data labels, you'll see now we can get the percentage. Now we can see the percentage, uh, and I'll just change the color of this one because it's a bit hard to see. Now, now we're getting the percentage that is in each of these groups. And now we can evaluate, well, our top 50 customers, it looks like, uh, in this case, relatively static. It doesn't seem like there's a huge trend that we need to analyze and, and dive into deeper. But if there was, we could see, well, okay, our top 50 clients, all of a sudden, potentially, they could have become a huge portion of our profits. And that uh, opens up a number of different discussions that you could have. Is that, you know, for instance, is that bringing too much risk to the organization? Uh, do we need to be selling, uh, focusing more of our sales efforts on these customers? All of those great things. Those are the things that you can kind of evaluate. So, um, so, so yeah, so this is, this is just one example, right? I just wanted to run through one really advanced example of how you can utilize DAX to extract incredible insight. Um, and, 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 and obviously these insights hold a lot of value because obviously they can, they can make, um, you know, they can cause, uh, they can create conversations, they can, um, they can uh, create uh, actions which, you know, you, uh, that can you know, create value or uh, in some cases distract from value. So it really, it really depends on, um, you know how you utilize these insights but the cool thing is is that you can achieve these insights they're very very achievable whilst this formula whilst this formula there's a little bit to it if you understand if you try to get an understanding of each individual portion of this of these um, formulas and you and you have an understanding of you know the background theory about what is actually happening within each of these formulas then you can do some really incredible things with power bi Okay, so that rounds off this example. I um, hope you got a lot out of it and, and can even try and replicate this in, in, uh, on your own data and your own environment.